In this video, I'm going to show you how to interpret a PadNet study through the website padnet.us. To start, log in and agree to the terms. From here, you will go to the Unsigned tab, and we'll have a list of all of your patients awaiting interpretation. From here, you can see the name, the date of the test, the date it was submitted, the site it came from, the type of test, and the status. If you have never engaged with the test before, it will say waiting interpretation. If you are in progress, you can see that it says saved. To start, we're going to click on the patient ID to open the test and go to the interpretation tab. From here, you will see our blood pressures and our pressure brachial indexes for both the right and the left side. And below it, you will see our PVR waveforms. In it, you can see the waves as well as the amplitude and the adjusted gain of that wave. You'll notice if the gain is anything other than one, the amplitude and gain appear in red. We'll come back to this in just a moment. When interpreting your results, we have a show sample PVR waveform button, which gives you a metric showing the shape of normal PVRs all the way to critical PVRs, as well as ways of rating the amplitude in the thigh and ankle and the calf and a guide to interpreting ABIs. To begin your interpretation, go through and select your rating for each of your PVR waveforms. When interpreting our amplitude, in comparison to our sample PVR button, these numbers are in relation to a gain of one. So whenever you're comparing it to a number that's in red, it means we're going to have to change it. For example, in this image, we notice that the gain is half the size. This means that the image would be twice as large, but in order for us to see the entirety of the waves, we shrunk it down to half the size. Therefore, in order to look at the original amplitude, we're going to have to adjust it by undoing the effect of this number right here. In this case, because the image is half the size of the original image, our amplitude needs to be doubled to return it to what it would be at a gain of one. If our gain is a quarter, we need to multiply it by four. So this amplitude with regards to our metric would actually be considered 36 instead of 18, which is above our range of 15, and therefore it's considered a PVR category one, which is normal. Now with our ABIs, you'll also notice it's at the bottom of this image right here. The ABI is automatically calculated, and you can directly compare those numbers to this metric right here. Now, once you've added your interpretation to all of your waveforms, you can click any one of these Save Waveform buttons. No need to select all of them. Once we've selected those waveforms, we have the option to edit our brachial indexes. Our ABIs are both within our range of 1 to 1.4, so we will leave them as normal. Our PVRs on a whole are generally normal, with the exception of some mildly abnormal toe PVRs. So we will select Normal as a whole. To view a patient's history, including BMI, former vascular procedures, and risk factors, click on the History tab right here. But for now, let's go back to the interpretation. From here, we can designate what the severity of the disease is. In this patient, we have normal ABIs and relatively normal PVRs. So it's fair for us to say the severity of the disease is normal on both sides. Once we've selected all of these gradings, we can generate the text for an interpretation. This text box will appear where we'll say a summary sentence describing the general condition and severity of PAD, as well as a summary of the ABIs. If we wish to update or edit the text, we can hit modify, make any amendments we'd like. Once we're happy, we can hit Restore. And if at any point we change our ratings, we can update 
and the automatically generated text changes. Lastly, from here, you will want to sign it by checking this box and then clicking Save Interpretation. If at any point you wish to notify both Biomedics and the test site of some abnormalities in the performance, check this box right here. Let's say you're looking at a waveform that you cannot interpret. It is important that you select non-diagnostic. If you, if you select not interpreted, or if you select not examined, the test will not let you sign and submit it, because not examined indicates that you will eventually examine it. So non-diagnostic is the result you want to select if you cannot interpret a waveform. Again, you can look at any attachments and upload any attachments if you'd like. And at any point, you can look at the details of the patient, the history of the patient, or return to your interpretation. So once we're happy with our interpretation, we can save it and click the Signed by Provider button. Again, you'll see once tests are signed, they may not be unsigned. If you're happy with this, you click OK. And your test moves from the unsigned to the Signed tab, along with all other signed tests. If you wish to find a test that has been billed, you can show your total history of signed tests by clicking the Showed Build Tests button. To bill a patient, click on their patient ID and find the bill hyperlink at the top of the page. Once you click on this, a report for the billing statement will appear in the next tab. On this tab is where you can find their insurance information, as seen in the box below. If you've clicked on the link that creates this report, the test will only be viewable when you click the Show Build Test box in the Signed Test section.